Plus Beam TV subscribers. Thank you for watching. This is part two of the topic Stand for Truth. Stand for Truth. Truth is an act, an act of demonstrating what is real, what is right, and what is godly. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. And it says, no one comes to the Father but by me. So if it's the way, the truth, and life, we must seek the way. We must abide in the truth so that we can get the kind of life that he lived. So that we can live it because we have followed his way. So it's something we do consciously. Living by the truth, standing by the truth, is a conscious effort that we must make as his children so he has guaranteed us that he's the life so if you are following him doing his will you are really living hallelujah psalm 19 i will read to us from verse 8 to 11 he says the precepts of the lord are right the precepts of the lord are right that means the way of the lord they are right they are perfect. They are the standard. They are the life. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The command of the Lord. The Bible lets us know that they are radiant. And meanwhile, I'm reading from the New International Version. Hallelujah. He says, giving light to the eyes that means he shows us the way the, the, the living the truth would make us to navigate our ways through life the god way so that we can discover the treasures that he has set aside for those who love him who do his will verse 9 says the fear of the lord is pure enduring forever the decree of the lord are firm and all of them are righteous the decree of the lord are righteous the things that god has asked us to do they are right they are the ways is set for things to be if it's not the will and the way of god from his word it is something else if it's not god's way it's another thing verse 10 says that there are they are more precious than gold the will of god the way of god they are more precious than gold if there's anything to desire desire to do it god's way the true way it says they are sweeter than honey than honey from the honeycomb sweeter than honey than honey from the honeycomb that is where we stand by the truth verse 11 says that by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. There is great reward. In keeping them, there is great reward. By it, your servant is warned. You are able to know, oh, there is danger there. Because your life is a life of truth. So, and the truth illuminates. The truth of God will guide your ways. The truth of God would help you navigate life. Because by it, you are receiving prompting. Because you are walking together with Jesus. As he is in the light, you are in the light. Glory to God. And we have been told that in keeping it, there is great reward. I'll give you an example of what happened. Hallelujah to the three Hebrew children. They stood for the truth. They will not compromise. They will not. Hallelujah. If you look at chapter 3 of the book of Daniel, we saw that these three Hebrew boys, they were thrown into the furnace of fire. And we know what happened. Because they stood for the truth, they were not going to bow down to the image of the king. They refused to. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, could not make them do it. Because they believed that they must Stand by the truth in the face of opposition. Remember in part one, 
Psalm 27, we said, the Lord is, 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 is my light. Whom shall I fear? And in truth is light. So if you walk in truth, in truth, there will be light around you. So they were not intimidated by what was going on. They kept their stance that they would not bow to that image. Not the image of King Nebuchadnezzar. They know who they are. My viewers, do you know who you are? Are you going to allow authorities that, that are threatening you to intimidate you to compromise? Are you going to observe prevailing circumstance and compromise the truth? You must abide by the truth. I read for us from Daniel 3, from verse 28 to 30. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke again, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are the three Hebrew children. He said, He sent the angel to deliver his servants who trusted in him, and they, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any other god except their god. Verse 29 says, Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made as ash heap, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. The fourth man in the fire showed up to be with these children of truth. And look at the, the king. He was convinced by the truth they believe. He is now on their side. These three Hebrew children brought light to the king. And invariably light to the nation. Because the king himself said it in verse 29. That therefore I make a decree that any people or language which speak anything and miss against the God of Shedra, Meshara and Nebuchadnezzar shall be cut in pieces. Are you on the Lord's side? Better be on the Lord's side because if he's not on the Lord's side, it's, it's the opposite side. You must stand on his truth like these three good children in the face of any challenge. Look at what verse 30 has to show us. Verse 30 says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Promotion. That's human reward, how much more the reward of God that approves for these three Hebrew boys. Hallelujah. The same thing we know of Daniel too. When they were told that they should not pray, he would pray as usual. As many times as he used to pray, he didn't move in. He would pray to his God. He knows who he is because they, they, he, 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 they've been enslaved somewhere doesn't mean that you should forget who he is because you are working in that office you don't does not imply that you should forget who you are because you are in that nation doesn't mean you should forget who you are because you are under that circumstance should not imply that you should forget who you are Daniel did not forget who, who, who he is and he stood by that truth even when all the other governors went to report him to the king that he's still not praying to any other god boy, he's God, Jehovah. That Jehovah did not let him down. It's that Jehovah that you know who will deliver you. Daniel was thrown into the, into the lion's den, but help arose for him. The lion respected him, they recognized him, they could not tear him apart. Hallelujah. The glory of God was present with him. So stand like Daniel. Don't quit in the face of opposition. Hebrew 13, verse 6 from KJV says, it says, he says so that you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So you step up for the truth so that this verse of scripture may be your portion. So that you can say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. For greater is he that is in you 
Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. First John 4.4 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't compromise. Don't be tired in standing for the truth. Don't quit. It's either the truth or nothing else. Because that's the nature of light. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 and 16. So stand on the truth. Maintain your composure. It's not in vain. In due season, you will receive peace from the Lord. Say, well done, my faithful servant. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching these two episodes. Part 1 and 2 of Standing for the Truth. As I said, truth is an act. Make conscious effort to carry out truth, to say the truth, to do the truth, to live the truth. And remember, God is with you. Thank you for watching and stay blessed.